How do you hold them accountable? How do you hold fossil fuel executives who knew that they were destroying the planet but kept on doing it? We will hold them accountable. Inspired by climate activist Greta Thunberg, millions all over the world are taking place in a global climate strike. From Thailand to the Philippines to Scotland to the UK to Japan to Australia, where it is actually the largest demonstration in Australian history. Now, to seriously deal with this climate crisis, the world needs a political leader, preferably somebody in the United States of America, as the U.S. is still the world's superpower. But thankfully, there is one Democratic candidate that is showing the leadership that is needed on this issue, not to mention on every other issue, and that candidate is Bernie Sanders. So last night, there was an MSNBC climate forum where Bernie was invited on to discuss his climate plan, and interestingly enough, the other two leaders in the race, Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren, did not show up. So I have a few clips here to show you. Uh, this first one, Bernie Sanders discusses the uh, need here to act boldly when it, cl when it comes to uh, the climate crisis. You're talking about administering this at a level that hasn't been done since World War II. It's an, it would be an enormous change to the capacity of the government. Chris, what you are telling me is that this is tough. Yes. I acknowledge that. <laughs> okay? But what is the alternative? All right? I'm told that it is expensive. And I'm told by Chris, correctly so, this is administratively very, very difficult. He's right. But you tell me what the alternative is if we do not act boldly and aggressively. All right? Not only are we fighting for your kids and your grandchildren to be living in a planet that is healthy and habitable, all right? But I should also tell you that this plan, Chris, in the middle of that transition, creates up to 20 million good paying jobs. All right, how so? We're gonna need just, we're talking about energy efficiency. And that means an understanding that in my state of Vermont, we are a lot of old buildings all over this country. We could retrofit buildings to cut the utilization of energy by 50% or more. It takes a lot of workers to do that. If we are going to be aggressive in moving to sustainable energy, wind and solar, I want those panels and other technologies to be done here in the United States of America. Massive amounts of work that have to be done. If we're talking about the electrification of our transportation system. That means creating a new rail system in America. We are already way behind Europe and Japan in that regard. That takes an enormous amount of work building those locomotives and those trains and the subway systems. So, I, look, I will not argue with you for one second that this is going to be administratively very, very difficult. But nobody has given me uh, an idea of what a better alternative is. All right. Before I get to, um, you know, Bernie Sanders and his plan here, I just find the way the media deals with this issue and really the way the, the mass media deals with most issues is so, it's so backwards. It's so negative, so pessimistic. They always, like, instead of actually inspiring candidates to action, like, instead of Chris Hayes saying, we have this huge climate crisis. The world is 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 de uh, being destroyed. What are you going to do to 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 stop that? To fix this? The question instead is, well, your plan is so big. I mean, we can't even get it done. It's it's almost impossible. Why are you even trying? Like, <laughs> it's so. It's just. It's always so negative. What the media should be doing is trying to inspire candidates, inspire politicians, inspire people to get involved, to change things, to make the world better. But instead, what they do is the opposite. Instead of inspiring people to action, they inspire them to inaction, to stop, to give up. It's absurd. But let me just show you. Uh, so Bernie Sanders, if you don't know, has by far the most comprehensive climate plan. He has a $16 trillion plan. Uh, climate plan that um, Gizmodo here is saying is nothing short of a revolution. And 
part of that plan, I mean, part of the reason why Bernie's plan is so comprehensive is because in addition to dealing with the, the crisis head on, he also takes care of the workers that may lose their job in the transition away from fossil fuels. So Bernie discusses that here. The guys who work on oil rigs, people who work in coal mines, people who work in the fossil fuel industry, they are not my enemy, they are my friends. And we are not gonna do what others have done and turn our backs on those people. And as you know, if you're familiar with the, with the proposal that I've introduced, we have allocated tens of billions of dollars for what we call a just transition. And so what we're saying to those workers, look, we don't hold you responsible for causing climate change, all right? But we have got to move away from fossil fuel. And what we build into our proposal is five years, five years of full pay, of health care, of job training, of education. So what Bernie addresses here is what conservatives have done to this conversation, where anytime you discuss dealing with, with the climate crisis, what conservative politicians do, conservative you know media does, is they try to make it sound like, well, it's going to come down on the average person. It's going to hurt the average person if we try to save the planet. But what Bernie is doing here is addressing that head on and saying, no, even if you are in this situation where you work in this industry, you're just the average worker, and you lose your job because we have to move away from fossil fuels, you will be taken care of. You will have full pay for five years and retraining for another job, likely in renewable energy, because there'll be millions and millions of new jobs created in this industry. So this, like, he is the only candidate that is saying this, that is doing this. And this is what, in, this is what allows people to really understand this is not, you know... Dealing with the climate crisis is not a zero-sum game. It's not, you know, uh, well, to save the planet, you have to lose your job, and we all have to have you know, a complete transition in our lives, and our lives are going to be negatively affected because of it. No. The average person, the average worker can be saved in this transition if you have a leader like Bernie Sanders that is willing to do that. Now, when it comes to the wealthy executives, the wealthy fossil fuel, uh, fuel executives that got us into the situation... Well, it's a little different for them because they understand what they are doing. For years, they have understood what they have done to the planet. And Bernie addressed how he'll deal with those executives as well. Now, what do you do? What do you do? And I want you all to think about it. Because the answers are not so simple, but I have my ideas. What do you do with an industry who for years spent, what, tens of millions of dollars uh, into phony think tanks, corporately run think tanks, putting stooges up on television, telling the American people, well, the evidence is not clear whether climate change is real or it's not real. They knew that it was real. Their own scientists told them that it was real. What do you do to people who lied in a very bold-faced way, lied to the American people, lied to the media, how do you hold them accountable? How do you hold fossil fuel executives who knew that they were destroying the planet but kept on doing it? We will hold them accountable. So what Bernie is discussing here is the potential to prosecute these executives, to go after the people that got us into this mess, to discourage this sort of behavior from going on in the future so look we saw this in the past when it came to you know smoking and all the lies that the those companies put out there in terms of oh actually smoking is exercise for your lungs yes that's what it is. despite all the science all the facts saying otherwise people getting cancer people you know their lives ruined because of it now when it comes to climate change same issue these executives paying people for years and years and years, putting pouring money into think tanks to spread misinformation out there about climate change. You need to deal with these executives. You need to discourage this behavior. So again, Bernie Sanders, the only candidate that is being serious about uh, dealing with this issue. Now, let me play one last video here. And this again, is sort of goes off this last point, but 
it showcases why Bernie is unique in this fight against climate change. It seems to me you can approach this problem in one of three ways. You could do what Trump does, which is basically irresponsible and pathetic, and that is to, and that's, I'm being kind to him. Or, Chris, you can do what some of my colleagues do and say, look, of course, climate change is real, but let's not overdo it. You know, we we have a limited amount of money to spend here, and we got to be modest, we got to be realistic about it. And a lot of folks are saying that. Maybe, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I happen to believe in what the scientists are telling us. And that means that if we're going to save the planet, we have to be extremely bold and extremely aggressive. Let me say this, because we don't see it much on TV. He knows my criticism of media, right? Yes. All right. (laughs) And we certainly don't hear about it in Congress. And guess what? We're going to have to take on the greed and irresponsibility of the fossil fuel industry. All right? There's no other way around this. Now, I wish I could tell you I had a 16-point plan that would do this. But at the end of the day, you have executives in the fossil fuel industry, in the oil companies, coal companies, gas companies, their scientists know exactly what they're doing. In fact, as you know, there's strong evidence that ExxonMobil, their scientists were telling them, what, for decades, that the product that they are producing is destroying the planet. So how do you deal with executives who are in companies making billions of dollars a year in profit and the product that they are producing Oh, happens to be destroying the planet. You got that? You got to deal with that. And we not only are going to have to tell them that they cannot destroy the planet for their short-term profits, politically, we're going to have to stand up to them. And essentially what my campaign is about, whether it's the fossil fuel industry or the healthcare industry, which made $100 billion in profits last year, or the private prison industry, which makes money, by throwing Americans into jail. We have got to stand up to the greed and corruption. I know those are strong words, make some of you uncomfortable. All right? I don't know how much they teach about that here in Georgetown. All right? But we cannot do what has to be done in this country. I wish I could tell you otherwise. I really do. Because I'm asking a lot of you. But we have got to stand up to the fossil fuel industry if we are going to save the planet. And there you go. This is why Bernie Sanders is unique in his fight against the climate crisis and would be or is the only leader to take this on and can be a world leader on this. As he says, there are three ways to take this on. You can, or, or to not take this on. You can be an idiot, uh, just a, you know, a corrupt idiot like Donald Trump. You can be a little less of a corrupt idiot, so nibble around the edges like Joe Biden or Kamala Harris. Or you can be like Bernie Sanders and actually take the climate crisis head on. And the way you do that is by building a real grassroots movement of millions of people around the country to work with him to, to, to push this message out there and put pressure on people in power to change what they are doing. That is the only way you can get this done. One, uh, Bernie says this again and again, and it's true, because he's an honest guy. He can't do this alone. One person can't do this alone. The president can't do this alone. It requires a mass movement of people around the country with the support of the president as, a, a, as someone leading that movement to get this done. So this is the only way to do it. And you know by Bernie's history, his 40-year record of fighting against special interests, regardless of the industry, every single industry he, he's done it, you know that you can actually trust him on this issue. In addition to the fact that he is the only candidate in this race that is a leader, uh, that is one of the top tier candidates in this race, not taking any corporate money, not having any private fundraisers, and not just for the primaries, but also for the general election. So, look, I don't want to go after Elizabeth Warren too much because I don't think these their bases really cross over. 
if you look at the 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 um the, the polling on their bases, who who actually makes up their supporters? Elizabeth Warren supporters are largely white, highly educated, and that's who they are. Bernie Sanders supporters are diverse and working class. So if we're looking at, look, down the road, a potential ticket, President VP, I think Warren would be a great VP in terms of getting that, that other um, that other side of the country together with this working class diverse movement that Bernie has built. But when we're talking right now, when we're talking the Democratic nomination, who should be the leader here? Who should who should be the one that is fighting for the people? It is Bernie Sanders. He is the only one that is raising money from individual donors in both the primaries and in the general. Warren said she would take money from everywhere in the general election. If you have a candidate doing that, how can you possibly trust them? Even if you trust them to still fight for the people, the reality is a lot of people won't trust that candidate because they have now sold out. So, and I've talked about this before, being in circles with wealthy executives, it changes how you think about issues. Even if you don't want it to, your environment as a human naturally impacts you. Bernie Sanders understands that and he has always taken himself out of those situations. He has never put himself in those situations. He has always stood up for the working uh, working class people and he has the most individual donors by far. Just broke his own record from 2016. Just reached 1 million individual donors this month. Beating He beat Obama's record in 2016. He beat his own record this time. He has 2.5 million individual donations, the most volunteers. He's also beating Trump in every poll, beating Trump in swing states as well in every poll, and has the most individual donors in Trump to Obama counties. Meaning, if you're looking for a candidate who is best suited to defeat Donald Trump, you have your candidate. This is the guy with the most support in counties that voted for Obama than voted for Trump. What more is there to say? So if you need a candidate to beat Donald Trump, you have it. If you need a candidate to take on special interests, you have it. If you need a candidate to stand up for, for the average person, you have it. If you need a leader on the climate crisis, you have it in Bernie Sanders.